Are the New York Mets one DH signing away from having a really good lineup in 2024? That's what we'll discuss on today's edition of Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you uh, amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Ficklestein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on X at Ficklestein Ryan. You'll also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. The New York Mets made a major league signing yesterday, acquiring Harrison Bader on a one-year, $10.5 million deal. Now, I broke down the signing at length in a bonus episode, but what I wanted to do now is look ahead. And the more I am thinking about this Bader signing, the more I've had time to chew on it, the more I do like it, and also the more I think it could be a prequel to another move, particularly adding a DH into the fold. If the New York Mets were just heading into a bridge year, which we've also talked about on a recent show, if this was punting on the 2024 season, focusing on development, not caring about trying to win this year necessarily, you know, obviously they want to be competitive, but putting that a little bit more on the back burner towards seeing what you have with your young talent and trying to turn the page to 2025. They're not signing Harrison Bader to a one-year deal. Harrison Bader is a win-now player for this team. He's a buy-low guy, although he got a good amount of money, but really that's a a bet on a guy who could bounce back and be a big contributor for you. But he is going to be taking away playing time that would have gone to Tyrone Taylor and DJ Stewart. Now, are these guys big pieces in the Mets' future? Most likely not, but they are guys who are under control, who are cheap for years to come if the Mets want them to be. And also, you have in the minor leagues, Drew Gilbert, who could be ready by midseason. You have Jet Williams and Luisa Helicuna, who are right now shortstops, or now one of them probably has to play second. Acuna did at the end of last season when they both shared a lineup in Binghamton. One of those guys could move out to the outfield. So if the Mets were just focused on 2025, they'd let it roll with what they had, and they wouldn't have worried about signing Bader. But they did. And I do think that that shows still a willingness to win this year. And if you look at this lineup currently, the big issue you have is you're relying a lot with what's in house on Brett Beatty at third base, Mark Vientos at DH, and then some combination of all the other guys that are in that outfield mix. But this lineup is missing a punch. So if you went out and signed one of these really good bats that's still available, the three that we're going to talk about primarily today are J.D. Martinez, Justin Turner, and Jorge Soler. If you were to sign one of those three guys and plug them into your lineup, look at how much it lengthens things. So we're putting Marte in the two-hole for the point of this exercise, betting on a bounce back. Obviously, there is still some questions there. But let's just say Brandon Nimmo, Starling Marte, Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonso. That's been your core four at the top of your line of the last couple of years, basically. Now imagine you slide J.D. Martinez into that five hole. And then you got Jeff McNeil batting six, and then Francisco Alvarez batting seventh. All of a sudden, while there is still the question mark that is Marte in that two hole, you're really only concerned about the eight, nine hitters in your lineup. And that's going to be your third baseman and your third outfielder. Now, because of signing Bader, he has the inside edge to be that third outfielder, to be the starting center fielder, pushing Nimmo to left, which gives you a much better defense, and he does have offensive upside. He's great against left-handed pitching, so I'm sure he'll be in there all the time against southpaws. But you're looking at an outfield that's definitely a lot better. And then you have Tyrone Taylor that's going to be factoring into this outfield mix, And DJ Stewart is an ideal platoon partner for Bader. So the outfield set, is it amazing? 
Not necessarily. But if Marta is to bounce back, if Bader bounces back, there's a lot of guys that could really help this team. And then Nimmo is your anchor. Third base. Brett Beatty is the you know guy that has the clearest path to the starting job. And then you have Joey Wendell as the defensive-minded backup. But now let's say you sign J.D. Martinez. And if you make that signing this week, and there's still a month left, and change actually, really. Mark Vientos knows if he wants to get on the field, he's got to play some third base. He was already out there with Francisco Lindor in Puerto Rico, you know, doing all these defensive drills. Maybe that's where those guys have a competition. Where Beatty isn't anymore battling Ronnie Mauricio because of the ACL, but he's battling Mark Vientos. And one of those guys is going to win that competition, likely Beatty. And if so, yes, Mark Vientos is a prospect that heads right back down to AAA. He'll put up big numbers. He's a guy the Mets could potentially trade. Other scouts will be looking at him there. And here's the thing. J.D. Martinez, Justin Turner, Jorge Soler, what do all three of those guys have in common? They're all injury risks going into next season. We'll get into that a little bit more in the next segment with who's the best fit because Justin Turner hasn't really been banged up, but he's 39. The other two guys have been. So there's always a chance that an opportunity opens up. With Beatty at third base, if he's struggling and Vientos is tearing the cover off the ball in AAA, again, an opportunity could open up. Pete Alonso at first base, if he ever went down, there could be plenty of opportunities. But what this would signal is a team that is still trying to win, which, of course, is what fans want. But again, I refer you back to that top seven or even throwing Marte out, just looking at six hitters in your lineup on a given day, knowing that you'd have Nimmo, Lindor, Alonzo, J.D. Martinez, and Jeff McNeil, along with Francisco Alvarez, you feel a lot better about the Mets' chances to be putting up four to five runs for their starting pitchers. Now the question is, is J.D. Martinez the best fit? Or is there another DH option that would be better? We'll talk about those three guys who might fit best in just a minute. Before we do, though, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. I live in South Florida. I'm actually a big Miami Heat fan. What I love about the Game Time app is when I log in there, I can actually see all the events near me, like Heat Games, and it shows you the prices right there. So I can shop for the best deals, find the lowest price featured, and you know I want to take my wife to the game. She doesn't care if they're playing the Thunder, the Bulls, or the Celtics, so I can find the best possible price. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind when you purchase. You'll see the view of your seats before you buy. So I usually look at the you know, viewpoint, try to get the lowest row possible at the best ticket value. And I got tickets. I'm going to the game. All in prices are shown up front. So you know exactly what you're getting with your great deal before you check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even better even an hour after the event starts. It's the place to go for last-minute tickets to get great deals. You can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked On L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. If you don't want to miss out on any of the latest Mets news this offseason, make sure you become a Locked On Mets Insider. This is our texting service where I can send you updates anytime something happens. So when Harrison Bader signed, the first thing I did was I went to subtext and sent the insiders a note about it. Then as I was preparing a show, I was feeding them stats about why I started to come around and like the move more and more. If you want to be part of all of that inside information, find the link in the episode description. Go to subtext.com. Slash locked on Mets. Looking over the DH options for this Mets team, JD Martinez is the best hitter. There's no doubt about it. He would transform this lineup the most. This past year, he hit 271, 321 on base. He had a 572 slug, he had 33 home runs and 103 RBIs. And he did all of that in just 113 games played. And even further, if you look at his baseball savant page, 
batting run value. He was in the 93rd percentile. So that was the top 7% of the league. Okay. You have expected slug, 96th percentile. Average exit velocity, and he's 36 years old. He was still in the 98th percentile, the top 3% of the league. 93.4 miles per hour is the average exit velocity. So this guy still hits missiles. His barrel percentage, 98th percentile. His hard hit percentage, 98th percentile. His sweet spot, 97th percentile. He strikes out a lot, but this guy is still a great hitter. He really is. And he had an unbelievable season this past year. Because you look back at what he did in 2022 in a down year, so to speak. 274 hitter, still really good. 341 on base, so actually better than this past year. But the slug wasn't quite there. He only had 16 home runs, so his slug was 448. Still good, though. And then the year prior with the Red Sox, he had 28 home runs, drove in 99, had a 518 slug. So you look at a three-year sample, he has still been an extremely productive bat. My question with J.D. Martinez is the health. Because you look at last year, and there are some concerns with what happened to him throughout the season that led to him only playing 113 games missed three weeks with a back injury in April. And that's the same thing that sort of hamstrung his production, the follow or the previous year in 2022. Now I said hamstrung. Speaking of that hamstring was another injury he had at the end of July, which followed him into August. Then that turned into a groin injury and he had a missed time at the end of August leading into September, another three week close to at least absence from the lineup that's how you get to 113 games played and again as i mentioned he's 36 years old turned 36 in august we'll turn 37 in august next year if it's a one-year deal for jd martinez i am all in but he is in a position coming off a great year to ask for a two-year deal if not a three-year deal and that's where i'm pretty apprehensive about signing jd martinez the Mets signed to a two-year deal I'd be good with it, but I'd much prefer a one-year deal with a mutual option and a buyout that can potentially get you off the hook just in case that thing turns sour quick. Because you don't necessarily want this guy in the books if you find out that he has some debilitating back injury. Like I- I'm still scarred from the Michael Kadir signing all the way back in 2015. You know, I'll remember how that one worked. Guy came off an unbelievable season with the Rockies, a perfect hitting environment, similar to J.D. Martinez now. Come to the Mets. He's going to be the perfect fit, and it just didn't work. So that's the type of thing that I look at, and I say as much as he is the ideal fit, and if you just talk about who's going to make this lineup the best, it's Martinez. I am a little concerned about the injuries the last couple of years. But then you look at the other options. Okay, now Justin Turner has been healthy. Don't get me wrong about that. Played 151 games in 2021. 128 in 2022, 146 this past year. So so that side of it, you're a little bit less concerned. At the same time, though, he's 39 years old. I think he's the most likely to sign a one-year deal, and he gives you some insurance at third base. So I, I have been in on Justin Turner. I'd be happy with that signing. He also doesn't provide quite the same offense as Martinez. And when you look at some of the advanced stuff at Baseball Savant, the barrel percentage, the average exit velocity, the hard hit percentage, He's not really hitting the ball hard anymore. Now, he's a a much better uh, plate discipline guy when it comes to not striking out, walking a little bit more, not whiffing, not chasing. So they're different hitters. But if you're looking to add that punch to your lap, that power, Justin Turner might not be the guy. Then you get to Jorge Soler, who is a really intriguing option depending on how many years he gets because this guy can hit bombs. He had 36 home runs for the Marlins, and that's not an easy ballpark to hit in. 2019, he had 48 home runs, which was the juice ball year, but juice baseballs, it's still hard to hit him out of Kaufman for the Kansas City Royals, and he did that. Now, in between, there's been you know some injuries. 2022 in particular, only played 72 games. 2021, that was the year where he ended up coming over to the uh, Braves in their World Series push. It was amazing for them, had 27 home runs, played in 149 games. He's been up and down, and he's going to strike out a lot. But he does draw his walks, gets on base at a pretty good clip. So Lair is a really good option for the Mets. Problem is he is 31, will turn 32 in February, and might want a four-year deal. I don't think that's out there for him. 
But at some point, you would think a team is going to settle and give him three years. And I'd just be concerned about that long-term risk. Now, two-year deal for Jorge Soler, I'd be more willing to see the Mets sign him than Martinez, if that makes sense, because he's just so much younger, right? Uh, I think his days of playing the outfield are kind of behind him, although you could stick him in left as opposed to Martinez, who's solely a DH. And the other factor in this is he does hit the ball hard. Like this isn't a Justin Turner situation. This guy, he, he still drills baseballs. So when it comes to offensive impact, I like Soler and Martinez the most. On a two-year deal, Soler I think is my favorite. On a one-year deal, I think J.D. Martinez is my favorite. I think Justin Turner is sort of the bridge of it all or the, the middle ground, I should say, of them all where it's a guy that's likely to sign a one-year deal. A guy that does provide something defensively at third base potentially or first base. So, so there's that, that that he helps with as well. And, you know, a guy that's still going to give you the offense that you want. Just might not be as alluring or as high of a ceiling as the other two guys. There is one final option I want to briefly touch on in the last segment. But I also want to talk about if it is worth it at all to pursue these DHs. Or if the Mets maybe should still stay internal. Stick with what they got. They've improved themselves as a defensive team. And maybe it's not worth it to take at-bats and opportunities away from the young guys. Not only Mark Fiantos, but the other ones coming up the pipeline, the guys that are on this roster currently. So I'll get to all of that in just a minute. First, though, today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed win or lose when you place a $5 bet. It's $150 in bonus bets. The app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways you can bet. A live same game parlays. You got the money line, the over-under. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. They also have their parlay hub, so you can see the most popular parlays that are out there, and you can just jump on one of those that you like, or you can make your own as well. And there's not just NFL action. You got the NBA going on. So every night, there's always something to lay a bet on. And remember, $5 money line bet on anything, you get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Now, we've already talked about J.D. Martinez, Jorge Soler, and Justin Turner as potential DH fits for the Mets, and all of them have been rumored to be linked to the Mets in some capacity. There's a fourth guy the Mets have not been linked to at all this offseason. It's not necessarily likely, but there is a world where it actually makes a lot of sense for the Mets to sign this guy, and it's one that you're very familiar with, Reese Hoskins. Hoskins is a really good offensive player. He's a terrible first baseman. But he's a really good offensive player, and he's hit free agency because the Phillies are keeping Bryce Harper at first base. Reese Hoskins is pretty much a guarantee for at least 27 home runs, as many as 34 home runs was his career high. He probably has 35 home runs in the tank, if not even a push to 40 in an absolute great season. Although if he didn't do it in that band box in Philly, he might not ever. But this is a guy that doesn't strike out a ton, that draws his walks, his career slash line is a 242 hitter with a 353 on base and a 492 slug. Put it all together for his OPS. That's a career OPS of 846. So about an 850 OPS guy. That's really solid production. He drives and runs. He is familiar with your division. He has a chip on his shoulder after tearing his ACL and not getting to play all of last year. And also finding out that the team that he spent his entire career didn't want him to come back. He can go to their division rival, get the chance for everyday DH at bats. Obviously, you could always rotate him and Alonzo at first base a little bit. And I do think there is something to be said about creating a culture in that clubhouse. And Reese Hoskins is a great clubhouse guy, just like Harrison Bader is. So you start to build a culture in there. You start to get enough guys in the room that are pulling the same direction that are also all in need to prove something. because. Count out the contract years in that lineup. Alonzo, Hoskins, 
Bader. That's three right there. Marte needs to bounce back to prove something. Uh, and then you have young guys, you know, fighting to to start their big league careers. And Alvarez and Beatty and potentially Vientos in some capacity. There's just a lot of guys that I think would have something to prove if they went out to sign Hoskins. You know, Martinez, Turner, Soler, they're getting contracts for what they've done. And they can still perform on those deals, absolutely. But Reese Hoskins, whatever deal he signs, it's going to have an opt-out after year one. Now, the one thing that makes this a little bit tricky is how tenable is a long-term uh, team with Alonzo and Hoskins. If you sign Reese Hoskins to, say, a four-year deal with an opt-out after year one, in some respects, great, gives you Alonzo insurance. For Mets fans who want to keep Pete Alonzo, there's some risk there that Hoskins puts up a great year, or at least a, I mean, if he has a great year, he'd opt out. Hoskins puts up a decent year, and he's still going to be under contract. He doesn't opt out, and you're paying Hoskins whatever it is, $20 million or something like that, maybe even more, and you're looking at Alonso and thinking, well, we got Hoskins to stick at first base. That's the one downside to it. I also just think that there's going to be other teams calling on Hoskins that might be able to give him a better opportunity to win or just who knows, there might be a team that just flat out gives him a five-year deal at a good number and says, we don't care about the injury uh, and, and all that risk. We're just going to take you on because it's an ACL. A lot of guys come back from it and we're going to trust that you're going to be fine. Uh, that could be out there for Reese Hoskins. And again, there's been nothing linking him to the Mets. He probably signs elsewhere, but if we're throwing out all the options, Hoskins is a sneaky good one. But the final segment was not supposed to just be about Reese Hoskins. It's about whether the Mets should stay internal. You talked to me two days ago. I would have said, all right, stay internal. But the Bader signing, again, suggests to me that the Mets are at least continuing to try to win. Now, I'm still very concerned about that pitching staff. They got to add an arm. I hope they get Shota Imanaga. I really do. Because it doesn't seem like they're in on Snell or Montgomery. We spent enough time talking about those guys. What they've done is they've improved their defense. Because I think they believe that a little hack for them is going to be putting out a defense at the end of games if they're sitting with a 2-1 lead. Being able to go to Nimmo and left, Bader and center, and Taylor and right is a great way to close games especially when you already have Lindor and McNeil up the middle in the infield. It's a really good double play combination. And you could even put Joey Wendell at third base. So now your only hole on the entire field defensively is Pete Alonso at first. I think Mets fans who watch him every day, personally, I believe Alonso is a fine defensive first baseman. I really do. So with all of that in mind, it's about adding offense. And if you don't get a DH, you're asking a lot of Brett Beatty and Mark Vientos. Now, on one side of it, that could be great. And those two guys can rise to the occasion, and you could satisfy multiple things. All like You can satisfy the winning and the development. And there's part of me that thinks about the long-term future of this franchise that thinks that is still the best course of action. If the Mets go that way, I'm not going to be upset with it because in that DH spot, there's enough upside options between DJ Stewart, Mark Vientos, Ian Starling Marte, and then going towards that defensive first outfield by playing Bader and Taylor on a frequent basis and having Marte get off his feet in DH. There are definitely ways the Mets can get around not signing that DH. But the reporting suggests that they're in the market for a DH, which tells us that they want to win. And if they could add any of those four names I mentioned today, and get a legitimate DH into the mix, while it sucks for Mark Vientos, it's definitely the best thing for the 2024 Mets. There's no doubt about that. And then it's just get some pitching, and this team does have a chance to you know, have a competitive season where they can be a sneaky team that makes a push. I don't know if they have enough pitching to win the World Series. They probably don't have enough pitching to even make the playoffs. But with a really good defense, enough hitting, if all these crazy bullpen ads that David Stearns has concocted in his mad scientist fashion create a really good bullpen, 
there's a world where the Mets can actually do some winning this year. And obviously, as Mets fans, what else could you possibly care about? Anyway, that's going to be all for today's edition of Locked on Mets. Appreciate all of you who've tuned in. I guess that's it for the week. It's Friday, right? Uh, if there's another signing, of course, I'll hop on another sh- to do another show. Uh, so make sure if you're watching on YouTube, you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content that can come your way. We're trying to make a push to 8,000 subs. So appreciate all of you hit that subscribe button. If you're listening on the podcast side, make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your shows. If you want to be a Locked on Mets insider, you can find the link at the episode description. Now that you made it to the end of the show, if you are uh, looking for something else to, to fill your time, go to the first ever 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube covering everything in the world of sports as Locked on Sports today with our local experts from each team and our league-wide experts from each league. If I Locked on Sports today streaming 24-7 on YouTube.